My name is Mary Ann Fagan, before I start, I must forewarn you that there will be some things mentioned in photos that may be disturbing for certain viewers. The intent of this video is to educate the public about a dark and disturbing event that happened in American history. On August 17, 1915, an American Jew by the name of Leo Max Frank was kidnapped and lynched by the Knights of Mary Fagan, name in honor of me. Let me share a little about who I am and about how I died. I was born on June 1, 1899 in Florence, Lauderdale County, Alabama. My parents were William Joshua Fagan and Frances Elizabeth Lena Benton. Before I was born, my father died at the age of 26 from measles. I had siblings, three brothers, Benjamin Franklin, Charlie Bryan and William Joshua and one sister Ali May. I also had siblings from my mother's second marriage. After being born in Alabama, our family moved to Marietta, Cobb County, Georgia. At the age of 13, I worked for National Pencil Company. On the day of April 26, 1913, I went to the factory to collect my earnings. This was the last day I was alive. I was murdered at place of my employment. It was believed that my employer Leo Max Frank killed me. According to witnesses, he was the last to see me alive. On April 27, my body was discovered in the basement, near an incinerator in the factory. A night watchman by the name of Newt Lee found my body at around 3.30 a.m. and reported it to the police. I had a dress on, but it was pulled up to my waist, my petticoat was torn and put around my neck, as well as a looped cord. My face was bruised and battered. I was raped and strangled. There are more details about how I died and the trials following my death. There is a lot to absorb so I leave it up to you to research the details of my case. Mr. Lee, the man who found me was framed. Two notes that were discovered mentioning the night witch, which meant watchman, Mr. Lee. Later after questioning some staff and my friends, it was discovered that the janitor James or Jim Conley wrote the notes who at first thought to be done by me was found by my body. Conley was a black man, but knew how to read and write. Conley admitted to writing the notes, however mentioned, that Mr. Frank told him to write the notes and help move my body to the basement. He was seen washing blood from a shirt. Police declared it was not blood, but rust. Mr. Conley mentioned while being questioned, that it was Mr. Frank that killed me. Leo Frank was convicted and sentenced to death. After many appeals denied by state and supreme courts. An application was then passed to Governor John Slayton. He investigated the case and found a lot of errors in the case. Eventually on June 21, 1915, Governor Slayton reduced Mr. Frank's sentence to life imprisonment, which was originally a death sentence. This decision by Governor Slayton infuriated the public. There was plans to attack him. His life was threatened. Shortly after Mr. Slayton and his wife moved out of state. As for Mr. Frank, in the middle of the night they moved him to Milledgeville State Penitentiary which was 150 miles away from Marietta, Georgia for his protection from the community and plans to hurt Mr. Frank. On July 17, William Crean tried to kill Mr. Frank with a butcher knife. He was a fellow inmate of Mr. Frank. A seven-inch slash to his throat severed his jugular vein. He was then admitted to the prison hospital for recovery. Tom Watson, a former populist and the publisher of the Jeffersonian was the voice for the people. Mr. Watson was provoked by Frank's final sentencing. He believed in lynch law. Throughout the case, Mr. Watson was active on creating propaganda on Mr. Frank's sexual orientation and interest in young girls. 
Soon after, a plan was devised by 28 men in Marietta to kidnap Mr. Frank from prison. Some of the ring leaders were Joseph Mackey Brown, former Marietta Governor Eugene Herbert Clay and Mayor E.P. Dobbs of Marietta. On August 16, 1915, the lynch mob, other known as the Knights of Mary Fagan set out to drove to Milledgeville State Penitentiary. The mob arrived late that night. One of the men cut telephone lines, others drained gas from prison employees and the warden was handcuffed. They took Mr. Frank. They traveled two miles east from Marietta at Fray's Gin. Their intentions was to lynch Mr. Frank. It was said that Mr. Frank continued to voice to the group of his innocence. He requested one thing before he murdered, if the group could give his wedding ring to his wife. Soon after Mr. Frank was lynched, word got out and spread like wildfire. Crowds old and young celebrated and began to become unruly with Mr. Frank's body. He was handcuffed, his legs tied up from the ankles. He was hanged on a tree branch at around 7 in the morning. Mr. Frank's body faced the direction of where my family and I lived. People took pictures of his hanging body with members of the mob surrounding him. The photos were so popular that it made headlines and people began making postcards of his death. Decades later, one witness by the name of Alonzo Mann, who was 14 years old at the time, confessed that Leo Frank did not murder me. Jim Conley was my murderer. He threatened the teen not to say anything or he would kill him. There are many theories circulating to this day. Yesterday marked the 107-year anniversary of the death of my employer Leo Frank. Do you think Mr. Frank killed me? Was it Jim Conley? Or by someone else or a group to create political, religious and racial wars? If you like this story, please like and subscribe to Artari's YouTube channel for more stories like this. Thank you for watching.